Hello everyone. In this session, we will see how the transaction monitoring software works and also we will look into how the transaction monitoring process uh, alert generation, how the alert is actually managed. So transaction monitoring process, uh, transaction monitoring software. Basically, what are this uh, transaction monitoring software? These are algos, algorithm programs or uh, softwares which are used for managing the transaction monitoring. Now, uh, customers, uh, uh, customers do hundreds of transactions and uh, a bank has thousands of customers. So it is literally not possible for them to do a manual transaction monitoring or the transaction by an analyst. So in such case, what happens is uh, the banks use algorithms or softwares which is been uh, to do it to perform a transaction monitoring. And the transaction monitoring for performed by them are uh, are the real time and uh, and where the volume is actually high. Some of the transaction monitoring softwares are uh, SaaS. Uh, you have Fico, uh, Fico Falcon uh, Fraud Manager, Oracle Financial Crime and Compliance Management, ACI Proactive and Risk Manager are some of the examples of transaction monitoring software. So basically, how transaction monitoring uh, softwares actually work. Now, the transaction monitoring uh, for the transaction monitoring, the rule setting is actually done. So, rule setting is uh, they'll talk about the various kinds of uh, rules or any such. Uh, what are how what how to uh, how to classify or how to uh, map as a as a, a transaction as a suspicious transaction? So, based on what factors? So, such rules will be set up, and the transaction monitoring uses such rule setting in a real time basis. It tracks the transaction and helps them to, and flags the suspicious transaction types. Now let's look at how a suspicious transaction uh, software actually works like. Now in the first place, a suspicious uh, su transaction monitoring software is actually sought for unusual activity. Now then we need to uh, see that does it transaction is actually done with a stated purpose. Now once the uh, alert is actually generated, the further investigation is carried on. So here it is stated does the transaction is actually done with the stated purpose means is it matching with the customer's business requirements if it's yes then it is considered as a not suspicious it can be proceed if it's no then you need to ask for the further explanation from the customer to ask whether is if the customer provides the further explanation and the explanations are deemed satisfied then the cons uh, transaction is considered to be normal if the customer provide if the customer fails to provide the satisfactory explanation then it is considered a suspicious transaction which is further proceed with the filing of SAR. Right. So the main purpose of performing a transaction alert is uh, to generate or create an alert. Now alert is where it is a it is a message we get generated by a transaction monitoring scene says that saying that this suspicious the transaction gets uh, some, uh, transaction looks suspicious in nature. Alert is nothing but a transaction monitoring software or an analyst with performing transaction monitoring will red flag the items. So this is what we call as a alerts. Now alerts can be uh, due to various factors. For one, it can be a sanction alert. Sanction alert re uh, refers to any notification which is generated by the by the uh, transaction monitoring software if it detects any persons, entities who are actually uh, sanctioned entities. For example, Mr. A is actually sanctioned and is a part of the watch list. There's a transaction which has been done by done with uh, done with Mr. A. It will actually uh, it will actually identify telling this person or entity is a sanctioned entity, and the transaction have to be done with this one. Now, what are the some of the examples of different alerts which is gets created? One, there is a, a alert which matches with the sanctioned entities which we discussed before. Then there is a transactions are done involving sanctioned countries. There are certain countries which has been sanctioned uh, for various purposes. They could be under economic sanctions or there could be under uh, sectoral sanctions or they could be under uh, comprehensive sanction. If the, any uh, transaction is done with the country or the company or individual belong to such countries, then that is considered to be a transaction done with the uh, sanction with the sanctioned countries that will be red flag. Or if there is any uh, any uh, uh, activities being done with the uh, company or entity which is prohibited or a, uh, uh, prohibited industries or prohibited activities, for example, uh, there is a company which is based in uh, Iran which is, has been uh, prohibited for since it belongs to a nuclear sector, a nuclear energy sector. So if a transaction happened with that particular uh, company, then it will be flagged by the transaction monitoring because it is a prohibited activity. Or 
if the transaction happens with the blocked parties or denied parties. Now, blocked parties or denied parties are uh, who comes under uh, sanctions and anybody, any financial institution or bank has been denied or blocked from doing any financial transaction with those entities. Now, these parties are known as a blocked entities or denied parties. If any transaction done with the blocked entities or denied entities, then the transaction monitoring will create an alert on this one. And if there is any uh, alert, if any transaction is done with the PEPs, okay, uh, the PEPs who are listed in the part of the watch list, if the transaction is done with a PEP or the, either uh, the payment or a uh, receipt happens with the PEP, then it will be then it will be flagged as a suspicious transaction. Finally, uh, if there is any uh, regulatory changes uh, and this, uh, if there is any regulatory updates and uh, in the the organization is any in concern with the regulatory updates, then this will be marked as a this will be marked as a this will marked as a suspicious transaction. Now we have seen what are the various scenarios in which a suspicious transaction can be flagged. So once a suspicious activity is flagged, then it is marked as a suspicious transaction. Then what the further steps is we uh, then the investigation the concerned transaction have to be in investigated in detail. Now, what is the first thing need to be done? The transaction which is actually flagged as suspicious need to be investigated in detail. For investigating in detail, first the AML analyst need to collect the relevant information. So, you need to talk, uh, you need to collect relevant information to do further research on this one. Like for example, analyze MT103, MT202 and collect the relevant information about the client. Who is the client? Who is ordering client? What is the nature of this transaction that need to be collected? Then the uh, alert need to be reviewed carefully. When I say reviewed carefully, the more further investigation to understand what is the customer, what is the nature of business of the customer, what is the ownership structure, all this need to be or need to be reviewed uh, and if required, further alerts need to be, uh, further alert, further investigation need to be done. The third step is they need to determine the risk uh, level of the car. Uh, is very important. Whenever the suspicious uh, transaction gets red flag or identified, First thing is they need to understand what is the risk level of the client. Is it a low risk client? Is it a medium risk client or a high risk client? Usually high risk client are actually given at most important and similarly uh, equal treatment is given to the medium risk client and the low risk client. Then the further investigation is done. Investigation is uh, further carried on to understand uh, what is the purpose. Uh, it may be involved in analyzing the transaction, analyzing the documents or uh, checking with the customers, asking for explanation from the customers will be done. Then uh, all the documents which has been collected will be uh, reviewed and find out like uh, if there is any, if still looks like a suspicious transaction. Now after performing all such uh, activities, then if the bank or the financial institution deem that it is suspicious activity, then they need to report to the authorities. Now report to the authorities means that the suspicious activity report have to be prepared and filed with the FIU which is a financial intelligence unit of the country. Now, let us say for example, a, a bank in US, let us say it is a city bank, find out that one of their customers have involved uh, for they have red flag the transactions one of the customers and after detailed investigation, the city bank uh, is convinced that this is a suspicious transaction. They can, they need to go and for, uh, file a suspicious activity report. That suspicious activity report will be reviewed by the money laundering officer. Post uh, the review, it will be filed uh, with the FIU. FIU is FI is FinCEN, which is the FIU for US. Now, what are the, uh, so we have seen what is, uh, how is the alert is generated and how the alert is actually managed. Now, let us look at some of the, uh, the two types of alerts. One is a true alert, another one is a false alert. Now, true alert is basically a alert which is actually considered to be true in the sense that it is genuinely a suspicious transaction, okay. So, some of the, uh, some of the examples of uh, true alerts are, one, there is a large and frequent cash transaction. So, there is a frequent uh, customers are doing a frequent cash transfers and it is happening at a, I mean, this large denomination is also high. So, that can be an example for a true alert or there is a unusual transactional patterns. Uh, for example, the customer uh, start taking, uh, start making a large uh, international wire transfers or the uh, wire transfer limits are actually high compared to their uh, normal limits, then it considered to be high uh, unusual transaction patterns. Then it could be suspicious uh, counterparts, for the money whom it has been sent across 
or the funny uh, uh, from the whom the counterparts whom the money is received those are actually suspicious for example they might be living in a high jurisdiction countries could be an, then or the transaction could be high, uh, done with done with or from high risk customers for example like uh, politicians or somebody uh, who's uh, from a casino industries or uh, correspondence banking so they, those are high risk customers and if there is any false or missing information so when analyzing the further information there are key information like uh, who is the sender who is the benefit who is the beneficiary what is the purpose of sending across this one or if there is any uh, backups additional backups like a trade invoice or reference number is missing then or if the information provided is actually not correct so that could be also example of a true alert now usually the true alerts can be found with the customers who are associated with the uh, with the following uh, services okay they can be a a company which are actually providing wire transfer or correspondent banking services or the customers who actually provide uh, the entities which provide a private banking relationship or they can be uh, electronic uh, transaction nature or they can be high risk customers or the transactions are originating or, or going to high uh, risk geographic locations or the transactions associated with the cash in the business or some of the high risk uh, pro uh, some of the high risk products and services now we have seen what is a true alert true alert in the sense it is a i mean uh, it's a genuine transaction and it is it is not a genuine transaction and it could be flagged as a suspicious one there is another alert which is called as a false alert now false alert is basically a transaction is flagged as a suspicious transaction however upon further investigation it's it is actually proved to be a genuine transaction or a normal transaction such alerts are actually called as a false alert now false alerts are normally uh, generated by the by the softwares or due to the rule settings and uh, these rule settings need to be monitored uh, regularly on change on a regular basis to ensure that there is no false alert now some of the reasons like uh, why uh, there could be false alerts is like uh, the the transaction could be a legitimate business transaction though it looks like a suspicious transaction upon further investigation there is a it seems to be uh, it seems to be a legitimate business transaction there could be a system or uh, data errors uh, means uh, the data or the rule setting which has been done has not been it is the data which is provided for the rule setting is actually incorrect that is why the system has actually generated a false alert or it could be a uh, incomplete or inaccurate data the data could be inaccurate or incomplete or sometimes there could be a random variations random variations happens in a business with there is a business fluctuations happens on a seasonal basis so these are some of the reasons for which a uh, bank uh, will when uh, there will be false alert will be generated now it is very important to uh, the, to ensure for the financial institution or a bank to ensure that the false alerts are actually minimized and uh, to ensure that this if there is a too many uh, false alerts then it will result in the customer dissatisfaction so in this session we have seen uh, how a transaction monitoring process, uh, software works what is a detailed transaction monitoring process what is that what need to be done uh, what is the alert what need to be alert once uh, once alert is generated and what is the how a true alert is different from a false alert thanks for your time